just look to the word of the Lord for a little bit. I'll just share a short talk before we close. So we know that today we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. This is what Christmas means to us as believers. Celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we know the birth of Jesus Christ. It was a miraculous birth. It wasn't anything normal or natural. But it was supernatural. And so we find when we look into Luke chapter 1. It says there that the angel spoke unto Mary. And we can read in verse 30 where it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Hallelujah. And it's a wonderful thing when we can find favor with the Lord. You see, favor is something we do not deserve, but we just get it anyway. Amen. So when God favors you, you are well favored. And there is nothing anybody can do about it. You are favored and you are blessed and you are just blessed and highly favored. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So Mary found herself blessed of God. Favored of God. And the angel was saying, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. And we know that Jesus is what he was called because he shall save his people from their sins. Brothers and sisters, sin is a killer. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. So we thank God that Jesus came our way so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus coming gave us hope that we can be eternally saved. Praise the Lord. His name is called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Thank God for that wonderful hope. When we call on Jesus, there is a lot of virtues there. For he says, in my name you shall cast out devils. In my name you shall take up serpents. In my name you shall you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If you drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. In the name of Jesus, there is complete victory. Amen. Hallelujah. So we give God thanks for such a glorious name. The times when we might be going through all sorts of problems, all sorts of situations, and you don't know who to call, you don't know what to say to anybody, but if you can just mention the name. Jesus, Jesus. hallelujah. It makes such a difference because there is wonderful power in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Do I have a witness in the house? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Many are praying to all sorts of other gods, but we have proven Jesus to be a prayer answering God. Amen. He said, anything you shall ask in my name, I will do it. Praise the name of the Lord. What a powerful name. What an awesome name. So we find that while when the angel spoke to Mary, Mary was confused and she said in verse 30, 34, Mary said, then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? <coughs> Seeing I know not a man. She was wondering, I'm going to bring forth. I don't know a man. I'm a virgin. How can this thing be? But with God, all things are possible. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And to make things even more special, and to bring it more home to Mary, we find that the angel went on to say, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called 
barren. Brothers and sisters, when you hear men put their name on you, and they begin to call you certain names, words have got power. They call Elizabeth barren. We a mankind was concerned she was a write-off. There was no hope where a human being was concerned according to their own reasoning. This woman is just barren from the time we ever knew her. And in Bible days, those barren women, they were not very highly looked upon. They were disdained. You see the kind of persecution that Hannah went through when she was barren. Barren women, they were almost despised as cursed. And so we find that Elizabeth was in that condition for a long time. But the Lord passed by. Amen. And when the Lord passed by, the Lord turned things around. Amen. And the barren womb that men call barren, God decided to turn it around and call it fruitful. Somebody give God praise in the house, man. Because God can turn around any case. Mankind could call it whatever they want to call it. They don't have the final say. God has the final say. So if, they, if you feel barren in any area of your life that you're not making progress, you're not making headway, and man say that this is just how you are and you will, things will never change for you, they have it wrong. Because if God calls you fruitful, man can't call you barren and get through with what they're saying because God must have the final say. Somebody give Jesus praise in the house. Hallelujah. If he calls you fruitful, you are fruitful. So this Elizabeth that was called barren, the angel said to Mary, your cousin Elizabeth is now six months pregnant. And I believe that helped to lift up her faith to believe God in her own situation. If God could turn around things so for my cousin, God can work for me too because God is not partial. The same God who blessed somebody else can bless you too. Amen. And we find that the Lord went on to say something very awesome in verse 37. The angel said to Mary, for with God, somebody say with God in the house. Oh. With God, hallelujah. There are numerous things that man cannot do. If you have certain diseases, they call it incurable. If you have some kind of problem and you go to human beings with it, they will tell you this case is hopeless. As much as they specialize to fix problems, human beings can go so far and no further. But when man says there is no hope, remember with God. Somebody say with God in the house. With God! Hallelujah! Once God comes into the picture, everything changes. There are numerous cases in the Bible we read that when Jesus was going to the house of Jairus to pray for the sick child, the child died. And messages came to Jairus telling Jairus, don't worry to trouble the master anymore. Forget about it because the child that he was going to pray for, the child is already dead. But Jesus intercepted that word. And Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid, only believe. I came to tell somebody in the house today who has received a bad report that the Lord has sent a different word today and is telling you, fear not, only believe me. Come on somebody, amen. Only believe God that is the key to your success and your victory. Don't give up because mankind said there is no more hope. For with God, hallelujah, nothing shall be impossible. And when God says nothing, he means absolutely nothing. And that's why we find that the Lord asks the question, he said, I am the Lord, the God of our flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? You may have a case that man called too hard to fix. They say that there is no way you're going to come through this one. But remember, with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. There is absolutely nothing. 
to ask for the Lord to resolve. Let faith arise in your heart today. For faith cometh by hearing. And by hearing the word of the Lord. Somebody in this house may be going through a case that man calls impossible. But remember with God, nothing shall be impossible. Somebody give God praise for the, for the word of God today. Amen. In the time of need, telling us. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And when Mary heard such a word, Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. I came to tell somebody in the house today. Sometimes we hear wonderful messages preached. We read the word of ourselves and we hear what God has done for Jairus, what God has done for the woman with this your blood who was sick for so many years. And we find that mankind, she spent every money that she had and she tried every physician in town and the thing was just getting from bad to worse. We hear about Lazarus who was dead for four days. Jesus turned up late when the man was already smelling bad, but the Lord Jesus still brought him back to life. Come on, somebody. The Lord that we are serving can handle any kind of situation. Sometimes we read all these things and we say, well, maybe it was just in Bible times. Maybe it was just in Abraham's time and in Moses' time. Maybe it was just in Joshua's time. Maybe it was just in Paul and Peter's time that God was doing such type of miracles. But the Lord has sent a word today to tell us that whatever God did before, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Let faith arise in your heart today. By hearing the word of God, just lift up yourself, poke up yourself, and stand on the promises of God. For the promises of God, they are yes and they are amen. All we have to do is to believe. Let me tell you something. After Mary heard the word of God from the angel, Mary did not fight anymore. She did not question God anymore. She did not question the angel anymore. She reached to a point of sweet surrender. And that's what we have to get to that point where we say, God, we're not even going to figure out how you're going to fix my case and my situation any longer. I just heard a word from God and that's enough for me. Because you have said it, Lord, I believe it, I receive it, and that settles it. Amen. And we find that Mary said, Behold, I'm maiden of the Lord. I'm here for you, Lord. Whatever you said in your word, I'm not fighting any longer. I'm just a recipient from this day. You said it, I receive it. Be it unto me. Somebody say, be it unto me in the house. Be it unto me. God, you came true for Brother Job. You came true for the three boys. You came through for Mary. You came through for all sorts of people in Bible times. Why not me? Somebody say, be it unto me, Lord. Be it unto me. According to your word. Lord, you have said it. Lord, you have spoken. I don't want to let the word of God bypass me. And somebody else get all the blessings from God's word. Because God's word is universal. It's available for the whole human race. The world will never return unto the Lord. Void. All he's looking for is for good soil. Because we can hear the best message. But we just don't believe. We don't just receive. And so we wrap ourselves over, over our breaches. But today we want to tell the Lord. Be it unto me. Somebody say be it unto me. Hallelujah God. I rest on your promise. I stand on your word. You said it and I believe that it is just as you said it's going to be. And when I stand on the promises of God and the word find a good soil, it will germinate there and it will bring forth good fruit. Somebody give God praise for the word of the Lord today that has been sent forth today. Hallelujah.
and he's only looking for good soil, who would say, be it unto me according to your word. Amen. Once God finds good soil, that word will never return unto him void. The word will germinate. The word will somehow bring up, spring up and bring forth good fruit. And we will see the evidence that God is not a man that he should lie. Whatever God has promised, he is more than able to perform it. Amen. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. All he's looking for is for hearts that are ready to receive what he wants to do in their lives. And I want to say, Lord, here I am. I am available to receive your word. Be it unto me according to your word. From the time Mary received the word of God and accepted the word of God, that was the beginning of her breakthrough. And she became the mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because she was available and willing and yielded to be used of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, you may be in this house or you may be hearing this word through the internet. You may have a case that man called too hard, too difficult to challenge it. But you have heard a word. You have heard a word in season to tell you that with God nothing shall be impossible. You have heard a word to tell you that God is just looking for available vessels who are willing and ready to receive, thus said the Lord. The Lord is not sending his word just for fun. The Lord is not sending his word just to give us goose pimples. A lot of times people are in the house of God and they hear a word and they shout and they jump. But when they leave the house of God, they don't even remember what they were taught or what they heard. But today we don't want to be hearers only. We want to be doers of the word. And that's why the word of God tells us that we should meditate in the word of the Lord. Meditate on the word of the Lord. Regurgitate, bring it back up, chew it back over. Let the word find that lodging place in your heart. And when the word find the right lodging place, it will germinate. It will bring forth good fruit. And God will prove himself faithful and turn your situation all around. Somebody give God praise for deliverance that is coming today. For somebody who will just stand on the promises of God. Because the promises are yes. And the promises are amen. If you're not saved in the house, today's a good day. It doesn't matter what kind of condition you find yourself in. Jesus came down to earth because he did not want anybody to perish. But he wants all to come to repentance. The Lord did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. He's, it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's why Jesus came. It's not so much about ham and turkey and all these things. It's about the birth of Christ Jesus coming to redeem man from sin. Always be reflective of the precious gift, the greatest gift that ever came to earth. Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're not saved, today is a good day to serve the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the enemy is taking out people very quickly. Just like yesterday, I saw a young man and he told me he was with some friend, with a friend, and they were attacked. The young man told me that he ran away from the situation. But he was concerned about his friend. The police came and spoke to that young man. And the police said, your friend is very seriously hurt. Your friend is seriously injured by those people who came to attack you. Brothers and sisters, that same night they took the young man who was injured. He was stabbed up and they took him to, they took him to hospital. In half an hour or less, his friend died. These are the days that we are living in today. You can be with somebody good, good, good. In good health, young and fit and everything. And all of a sudden, tragedy does strike just like that. So it could be mistaken identity. It could be anything. You're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And they turn up and 
this is what is going on in our city today. It's a serious world we're living in. Only underneath the blood of Jesus, there is safety. If you're not saved, come into the ark of safety before it's too late. So if the enemy should strike at any time, you know that your soul is in the right place. You may have a situation today that is boggling your mind. You don't know what to do with it any longer. But you heard a word from the Lord saying, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. That's all you needed was a word. And you have heard a word. And the Lord is telling you today, just say, be it unto me. Be it unto me, Lord, according to your word. You have heard the voice of the Lord and you want to respond and say, Lord, let your word come forth in my life and become reality. Today is a good day. We're going to come together and we're going to pray and believe God to bring his promises to pass in our life. If you have a case, bring it and come quickly and we're going to pray before we go. Amen. Hallelujah. You have a prayer, a case that man caused impossible. Man has written off a stubborn case, a challenging case, a case that is giving you problems, but you want to see God resolve it. You want to say, beat unto me, break on my life, Lord. Come quickly, please. Amen. Break in my life. Amen. Whatever the case it is, bring it to God today. Beat unto me, Lord. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. The Lord Jesus. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.